Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank you for being here and thank you for having me as your speaker. It is an honor to be in the presence of such an esteemed audience. I would like to take this time to thank the organizers, staff, and volunteers. Uh, they deserve a round of applause. TED has always been at the forefront of technology, entertainment, and design, valuing progress, bringing people and ideas together. That is truly what TED is about. My name is Tehran. Yes, like the capital city of Iran. Please hold your applause till the end. I don't have much time. I know what you're wondering. What were my parents thinking naming me Tehran? It's like they wanted to know how many times I could get pulled over in one day. No. I'm half black, half Iranian. And my Iranian father and my African American mother were thinking that I should be raised proud of both of my unique cultures and heritages, which I am. I must admit that uh, being super good looking and smart is not the only advantage of being half black, half Iranian. In fact, um, there's a lot of other advantages. Uh, I have a lot of fun at the airport. Homeland Security knows me on a first name basis. And um, I can always have a summer home at Guantanamo Bay. The beaches are fantastic. But the biggest advantage is the fact that I get to be both an observer and a stranger to my various cultures. This gives me a unique perspective from an almost exclusive point of view. Growing up, I always watched the world around me. And the most important part of that world, to an adolescent boy, of course, is the women. I would always watch the women around me. And before I sound like a stalker, I mean to say, I would watch people like my mother, my grandmother, my aunts, neighbors, their friends. What I found was that there is a general overwhelming consensus in the world that black women are strong, proud, brave, and beautiful. There are a lot of examples all around us. Uh, Oprah Winfrey, billionaire extraordinaire. She cares about the world so much, she gives a car to every audience member. And before you think it, no, I'm not giving you a car, so relax. Academy Award winning Halle Berry, who is beautiful on and off screen, known for playing strong women, even in her beautiful frame. My personal favorite, Whoopi Goldberg, who is so cool and so proud, she doesn't even have eyebrows. No one even notices. Come on, come on. Don't act like I'm the only guy that watches The View. Condoleezza Rice. Okay, I'm just kidding about Condoleezza Rice. She's not even black. But the point is that the women are strong, proud, brave, and beautiful. And as I'm watching these amazing black women, I see many similarities in strength of character and conscious morals in Iranian women. So why is the same consensus not applied to Iranian women? Why are Iranian women not known for being strong, proud, brave, and beautiful Iranian women? Is it general bias? Is it political propaganda? Is it media depiction? Is there truth to the stereotypes? And before I start, let me explain that the phrase Iranian women is actually a very diverse in nature. It includes Turkish, Kurdish, Assyrian, Armenian, of course, Persian. They are Muslim, they are Christian, they are Jewish, they are Baha'i, they are Zoroastrian, and many more. Diverse in race and religion, but bound by social character and culture. Iranian women are also strong, proud, brave, and beautiful. And that is why I'm here today. I would like to examine and reevaluate the stereotype to clear up the notion that Iranian women are anything but amazing. I would like to shed light on the misconception, the misperception, and the misportrayal of the Iranian woman. There are three basic categories in which Iranian women, I believe, are wrongly stereotyped. First, is that they are misconceived. Misconceived as being subservient, something that any guy that's ever dated an Iranian woman knows is totally not true. <laughs> Secondly, they are misperceived. Misperceived as being uneducated, something that any guy who has been to med school lately also knows is not true. 
And finally, and most important to correct, is that they are misportrayed, misportrayed as being ugly or unattractive. Something that any guy with two eyes and has ever been to LA, DC, San Fran, New York, anywhere there are beautiful Persian women, knows is very, very not true as well. Let me begin with being subservient. There is always an image of the subservient Iranian woman at her husband's beck and call, the sultan with his harem of women and hundreds of wives who he dominates. Or maybe the Sally Fields character experience in the movie Not Without My Daughter. Uh, no, fans of, uh, no fans of that movie in Iran, I'll tell you that. Uh, depicting her horrible and harrowing experience as a strong, independent American woman made to be subservient and bow and stoop in, in, in her escape from post-revolutionary Iran. The media gives you a choice. You choose her covered or her uncovered. But that's how Iranian women are unfortunately misconceived. Well, that image, that image changed in the summer of 2009 after the presidential elections in Iran were protested and her face was plastered all over CNN, Fox, MSNBC, BBC, and every other major news source outlet in the world. Made a martyr of the Green Revolution, Netta became the symbol of protest and strength in Iran. Government abuse and protests are not unusual in the rest of the world, let's be real. So what made this series of protests so interesting and intriguing to the world news? It was the fact that everywhere the cameras went, it was the Iranian women that they saw in the street, standing up for what they believed in, uniting, being a voice of protest. This was not a woman's revolution, not at all. This was a general protest, but it was the women, Iranian women who were leading the way. So where were all these subservient Iranian women? Well, I guess all of them stayed home as millions of strong Iranian women took to the street. And trust me, you never want to get into an argument with a subservient Iranian woman. I'll tell you that much. Secondly, there is the misperception, the misperception that Iranian women, both inside and outside the country, are uneducated. And, and this image, it, it takes the shape of a covered, uh, uneducated buffoon of a woman merely chanting chants and burning flags, like an uneducated redneck hit. <laughs> it is unfortunate how many people would be surprised to know that Iranian women, many Iranian women, are doctors. They are lawyers. They are dentists, they are scientists, they are engineers. It should be no surprise that Iranian women are in fact extremely educated and in fact extremely intelligent. According to the higher education statistics, nearly 78% of all Iranian women attend higher education, way more than Iranian men. In the United States diaspora alone, one out of every four Iranian women goes on to receive a master's, doctorate, or some other higher academic professional degree. Let me give you some resumes. Shohra Avdashlu, Academy Award nominated and Emmy winning Shohra Avdashlu, who studied acting in Cumbria, England, Shohra Avdashlu, producer, director, and actress best known for her works in House of Sand and Fog and the House of Saddam, Shohra Avdashlu. She was also an X-Men. I know, I know, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> or maybe I should tell you about Paradis Sabeti, or I should say Dr. Paradis Sabeti, MIT, Oxford Rhodes Scholar, Harvard Med School, top of her class. Dr. Pardis Sabeti, whose work as an evolutionary geneticist and professor at Harvard University, she was awarded her top honors as well as voted by her academic peers as one of the people that will most likely save the world one day. Or maybe I should tell you about Christiane Amanpour. Yeah, that's right, she's one of us. The head correspondent for CNN, Christian Amanpour, and currently with ABC News, who has the respect of journalists and heads of states alike, graduated summa cum laude from the University of Rhode Island. And this young lady, with her mouth wide open, ready to say something daring and profound, this is Dr. Shirin Ebadi, 
a lawyer, a judge, a human and women's rights activist, and a doer of the imaginable. Dr. Shirin Ibadi won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2003, one of only 10 women ever to do so for her pioneering efforts in human rights and democracy. Whoever thinks that Iranian women are uneducated uh, should probably go read a book, like Marjan Satrapi's Persopolis. Finally, the biggest and worst and most untrue stereotype of them all is the misportrayal of the Iranian woman. As ugly or unattractive, that's a total misportrayal. The image being that beneath the veil lurks an ugly beast, rah, ready to attack. Yeah, that was my beast. Rah. Actually, she kind of looks like one of my aunt's friends, but I won't get into that. What I will say is this. A picture is worth a thousand words. What do you think of them? Are they ugly or unattractive? These, by the way, are my future ex-girlfriends, <laughs> though they don't even know them yet. Nazanin Afshin Jam, Romana Amiri, Nadia Bjorlin are just some of the many supermodels that Iranians have produced over the years. These ex-girlfriends, uh, this ex-girlfriend is former Maxim cover girl Sara Shahi, U.S. Network's newest, brightest star, starring in her own series, Fairly Legal, where she uh, realistically plays a lawyer, mediator type who tries to help her clients' lives. And this ex-girlfriend of mine, this is uh, Golshifte Farahani. Not only is she gorgeous, but she's extremely talented. She's an award-winning actress and pianist who was hand-picked to play opposite Leonardo DiCaprio in the film Body of Lies. And if she's good enough for Leo, she's good enough for me. The most important part is that the Iranian woman's beauty is not only skin deep. The Iranian woman is as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. And beautiful, they truly are. So there it is. Undeniable proof that the stereotypes are wrong that the powers that be try to unfairly mislabel and misprofile the Iranian woman. Unfortunately, as in every part of the world, there are forces attempting to put women in general and keep the modern Iranian woman down. These forces must be stopped. <laughs> that was my George Bush. I know I'm horrible. I'm horrible. But you get the point. This has not always been the case, though. Ancient Persia was actually the first nation in the entire world to recognize the equality of women under its laws. In culture and in law, women were allotted suffrage, uh, able to own land, and were equal to men, as in the Zoroastrian custom. Even in Homer's Iliad and the Odyssey, the West's most ancient and recognizable epic, Less than five women were ever mentioned by name in total, uh, as was custom in those days. At the same time, the Shahnameh by Ferdowsi, uh, ancient Iran, Persia's great epic, mentions over 50 women by name, almost equal to the amount of, win, of men. Don't get me wrong, the struggle does exist. The question remains, what can you do to empower the Iranian woman? The answer is nothing. They are empowered already and empowering themselves. The better question is what can you not do? The answer is you cannot believe the stereotypes. You cannot underrate their strength. You cannot underestimate their beauty. You cannot undervalue their worth. You cannot give in to media misinformation or political propaganda. You can influence your own minds. The Iranian woman is every bit as strong, proud, brave, and beautiful as their counterparts all over the world. I'll leave you with the story. It's about uh, the mayor of Beverly Hills, the Honorable uh, Mr. Jimmy Delshad. Yes, an Iranian. No surprise, it is Beverly Hills. And his lovely wife of over 30 years. Somehow, I found myself invited to a dinner with them and their colleagues. Uh, about a year or so ago, and during this dinner, a, a gentleman walks by. Miss Delshad gets up and excitedly uh, approaches him, gives him the biggest hug. 
and they start talking excitedly. Uh, we all pretend not to look, you know, it's kind of awkward. She returns to the table a little while later. And, and Mr. Delshaw, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's the first to speak. He's like, he's trying to sound cool, you know? Who was that? <laughs> and, and he asks, trying not to sound too nosy. Um, she says, that was John, my first boyfriend, uh, my first love. Uh, I haven't seen him since before college. But what was he doing here? You know, he, he's trying to slide it in. Uh, he, he works here, she says. Uh, he told me he's the head bartender. Drinks on the house, she replies, right? And a bit of jealous husband pride, Jimmy turns and says, well, aren't you happy you met and married me? Instead of being the wife of a bartender, you're the wife of the mayor of Beverly Hills. And she looks him dead in the eye, and I'll never forget. Says so Jimmy Drew, if I had married him, he would have been the mayor of Beverly Hills. The strength of a woman knows no bounds. So it is true. And as the godfather of soul himself, James Brown, rest his soul, once said, it is a man's world, but it ain't nothing. Nothing! That was my James Brown. I know, I'm horrible at these things. Nothing without a woman or a girl. The Iranian woman, strong, proud, brave, beautiful. over the road Man made the train To carry the heavy load Man made the electric light To take us out of the dark Man made the boat for the water But no one made the eye